Yo, Sydney here. So today I want to talk about the best export settings in Premiere Pro for your YouTube videos. But first, I want to thank the sponsor for today's video, Norton. Ever since going full-time as a content creator, I am constantly busy filming, editing, marketing, and doing all the other things that I have to do to run my business. And so I don't have time to worry about things like viruses or my online privacy. But with Norton 360 installed on my Mac and my iPhone, I don't ever have to worry about that. Norton 360 scans and helps protect your devices from viruses, malware, and even ransomware. You can use the secure VPN built within the app for private and safe browsing. You can set up parental controls for the kiddos, and you can even save your passwords with the password manager built within the app. And the best part for me is that I don't even notice that Norton is there, which is great because I can just concentrate on creating and running my business. So check out Norton if you wanna help protect your devices and your online privacy, and you can do so by clicking on the link down below. Thanks, Norton, for sponsoring this video. Uh, all right, so let's talk best export settings in Premiere Pro for YouTube videos. Now, there are two ways to do it. The first way is to use the built-in presets in Premiere Pro to export your HD or 4K videos. In fact, if you don't care about customizing your export settings and you just wanna export your video right away, here's how you do it. Just go to File, Export, Media, and then see where it says Preset. We'll just click on the drop-down Go all the way down and either choose YouTube 1080 or YouTube 2160p 4K. So depending on your video, whether it's an HD video or a 4K video, you just choose one of these presets. We'll just do 4K and export, done. And honestly, if you do just that, you should be totally fine. Like the vast majority of people, like 99% of the people watching your content won't probably even notice. But if you're one of those creatives that just want the absolute best quality possible for your videos, rendering at the least amount of time, then stay tuned because I'm gonna show you my personal favorite export settings in Premiere Pro. First, I think we should address the issue of HD videos versus 4K videos. If you shot your videos in 4K and you edit your videos in 4K in your timeline, then you should export your videos in 4K. And if you shot your videos in HD and you edit your videos in HD, then you should export your videos in HD. The resolution doesn't really matter too much when you're exporting a video. Like there's another setting that's way more important. We'll talk about that later. But when it comes to properly exporting your video, the rule of thumb is whatever resolution that you edit your video in, you should always export in that same resolution. So however you shoot it, if you edit in HD, you should export in HD. And if you edit in 4K, you should export in 4K. All right, so with that out the way, let's go ahead and customize our export settings for YouTube. So usually I film, edit, and export in 4K, but with this particular clip is actually in HD, and so uh, we're not gonna select the 4K YouTube preset. In fact, we're gonna go and choose the HD preset. So go ahead and click on the drop down, and let's go select this option right here, YouTube 1080 Full HD. And like I said before, if you don't care about customizing your export settings, and you just wanna export right away, then this preset is totally fine. Let's go ahead and customize these settings starting from the top down. Now the video format should be in H.264. If you click on the drop down, there are different options. Since we're dealing with YouTube, we're gonna select H.264. All right, moving on down is the output name. And so here you just enter whatever title you want for your video. Uh, for me, I'm gonna do it this way because I'm a bit OCD. I'm going to title it by the date. So 2021, July. 20. I'm gonna go underscore and the title of the video, which is, I don't know, best export settings. Oops, I can't spell. And then underscore one, because there are so many times when an upload fails or if I notice a mistake in a video, I'll just delete that video and re-upload again. So for me, it just makes sense to number them. You don't have to do what I do, this is what I do. And that is not a one, that is an exclamation mark. I am sorry, there we go. Okay, so that's the title of our video. Uh, let's go ahead and move down. Obviously, you wanna make sure that these boxes are selected. We wanna see video and we wanna hear audio. Uh, moving on down, the basic video settings. Now, I don't really mess with this particular section unless I'm making vertical content. If I'm making vertical content, then the width and height should be flipped. So if I'm exporting a video in IG Reels, the width should be 1080 and the height should be 1920. And so whatever aspect ratio is in your timeline, just hit match source and your export settings will match that aspect ratio. But since we're not making vertical content, we're going to skip that. Uh, moving down to frame rate, you wanna make sure that you match the frame rate in your timeline. And even if you have multiple video clips with different frame rates, your overall sequence should have a specific frame rate. In this example, my sequence has a frame rate of 23.976 and so we're going 
going to leave it right there. Moving on down, we got frame rate, field order, and aspect. Uh, I don't touch any of these settings at all, and so you can just skip that. Uh, moving on down, we have this tick box that says render at maximum depth. I always select this option because I want to render at maximum depth. Depth? Depth, depth. Render at maximum depth. Whatever. I always tick this box because I always want to export my videos at maximum depth. Depth. You're not going to see a vast improvement of image quality if you select this option on. Like, you might see uh, a slight improvement, but this option really is more for creators that film with cameras that have 10-bit filming capabilities or more. So for me, I make sure that that option is on. Okay, moving down to encoding settings. First, the performance. Always choose hardware encoding, whether you're using a Mac or a PC. Hardware coding is much better than software encoding. For profile, we're going to leave it as high, and for level, we're actually gonna bump it up to 5.2. Now, this is going to result in a bigger video file size, not by much, but you are gonna see a slight improvement in image quality, just, just a little bit. And then going down all the way to bitrate settings, okay. So this is what I wanna talk about, bitrate settings. More important than video resolution, your bitrate settings is going to determine the quality of your video. Basically, when Premiere Pro exports your video, your bitrate settings is going to determine how much data Premiere Pro is going to pack in each second. So for example, over here with the default settings, the target bitrate is 16 megabits per second. So that means Premiere Pro is going to export 16 megabits of data per second. And the higher the number, the more data is packed into your video, resulting in a much bigger file size. And so you kind of want to balance the size of the video and the quality of your video. Let's go ahead and look at the different options, uh, starting with this one, CBR. CBR stands for a constant bitrate. So that means Premiere Pro is exporting your video at a constant bitrate. Now that might seem like the safe option because you're exporting at a constant bitrate, but if your video is 10 minutes long and you're exporting at 100 megabits per second, that's gonna result in a very, very large video file. You don't want that. Like especially if your video is kinda like this, just you sitting down talking, like you don't need to have a high bitrate. Moving on down are two different versions of VBR, or variable bitrate. And basically with variable bitrate, Premiere Pro is going to export your video at different bitrates depending on the action or movement in your video. So for this example, if Premiere Pro is exporting this particular scene, it doesn't have to export it at a high bitrate. It can export at a lower bitrate to save on file size. And if in the next scene there's a lot of action, then Premiere Pro will detect that and export that particular section at a higher bitrate. And there are two options for VBR. The first one is one pass. And so Premiere Pro is going to export your video in one pass. Think of it as like the first pass is like the first assessment that Premiere is trying to figure out like how to export your videos. And then when it comes time to the second pass, it's like, oh yeah, I, I know what to do. Boom, looks way better. I don't know if that's how Premiere thinks, but that's, that's how I think. So for a scene like this, where I'm just talking and kind of just doing nothing really. The bit rate for this section of the video shouldn't really be that high. Where if the next scene in the video, there's like a, a major fight scene, which I don't know why, Premiere Pro is going to detect that and render that part of the video at a higher bit rate. So as the video exports, the bit rate is going to change, but resulting in a much more manageable video file size. So we're gonna choose VBR 2 pass, and now we're gonna decide what the target bit rate is, as well as the maximum bit rate. Now YouTube actually has a bitrate guide on how to export your videos. And so we're gonna take a look at that right now and go to bitrate. And here, this is your cheat sheet. This is what you need to know. If you look over here for 4K videos, the recommended bitrate for videos shot in 24, 25, or 30 frames per second should be between 35 and 45 megabits per second. And if your video has higher bit rates like 48, 50, or 60 frames per second, the recommended bit rate should be between 53 and 68 megabits per second. We're just gonna focus on these values right over here. Regardless if you shoot in HD or 4K, we're gonna use this guide to help us set our target and maximum bitrate. Since the video bitrate is between 35 and 45 megabits per second, uh, we're just gonna go down the middle and we're just gonna select 40. So the default is 16, we're gonna change that puppy to 40. And then the maximum bitrate, let's go back to the YouTube bitrate guide, uh, should be between 53 and 68. We're actually gonna go a little bit higher. And so going back to Premiere Pro, our maximum bitrate settings, we're gonna change that to 70. Uh, and the reason why I'm not selecting 68 is because, well, 70 is a nice round number. And if I look at my export settings, target bitrate 40, maximum bitrate 70. 
just looks nice. <laughs> that's it, that's the only other reason. Uh, so that's it for that. And then uh, the last few things, make sure that you use maximum render quality is ticked, as well as use previews, because uh, I always tend to render my sequence before I export my videos. It just makes it faster for Premiere Pro to export a video by using those preview files. And so yeah, I just make sure to use previews whenever I export. And that's pretty much it. Like I don't really touch anything for the audio settings, like all that looks really good to me. Yeah, all that looks, all that looks great. And that's it. And you don't have to do this every single time when you export a video. Like you can actually save these settings as a preset. And in order to do that, you just go back up over here next to the preset dropdown. You're gonna click on this icon over here and then name your preset whatever you want. We'll just say SIDS Awesome Export Presets HD, baby, whatever. And then now, whenever you wanna export your videos, you can just go to the drop down over here and select the preset that you just made. And then once you're happy with that, you just press export and you're done. Whoo, getting a little breathless here, guys. Getting a little breathless. I've been filming for over an hour, my gosh. All right, guys, well, that's it for this video. Hopefully this was somewhat helpful to you. I don't know, let me know in the comments below. And also let me know what other tutorials you want me to cover. Will I do them? Will I not? I probably won't, but you can always try. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you later.